right. Good evening. It is 7 p.m. I call this meeting of the Grafton Finance Committee to order. Uh, in person, we have Mark Haddad, Nick. <coughs> Excuse me. Nick, Victoria, and Greg Marr. Online, we have Heather and Q and Skip Courier, along with Mary Loria, uh, Evan and Amber from and from the school committee. Dr. Cummings, good evening. Welcome. Thank you very much for having us. We're still trying to, am I on now? All right. So I go on to the Zoom. something here. Cancel it. It's a joint meeting meeting ID. Do I need to put in an ID? I'm having um, trouble at every tech turn. Eight seven eight five three seven zero five zero three one. As an attendee, can you perform? Yep, I'm doing it right now. Okay. We need to give him permission to share. Yeah, I just got it. Let's see. All right, here we go. All right. Oh, phew. Yeah. <laughs> that was the stressful part of the day. All right. Well, thank you very much for having us. Um, so, Jay Cummings, Superintendent of Schools. Sitting next to me is uh, Kathleen Lungarini, our wonderful, somewhat new finance director, came on board uh, in July um, and has been doing a wonderful job. So tonight we're going to talk about FY25. Obviously, you know, that's worthy of discussion. It's really after FY25 where um, it gets particularly challenging. We're not going to focus on that, but I am going to touch on it. Um, you've seen the new budget book, I hope. Um, we very well put together. Oh, thanks. Uh, well, I say thank you. It's really Kathleen is nice job. taking the lead on it. Um, Coming out of COVID, we had our traditional book, then we had done a kind of a, a blended book with ClearGov, which was, it was all okay, but then we had the COVID money, and it was just, coming out of that was a perfect time for us actually to reset the book. Um, so we did that. So I think going forward, it's going to be fantastic. It's good now, but having years of consistency is just going to make it better. Um, we moved, obviously, you probably noticed from that DESI account structure that made the end of the year report much easier. Um, and while that was a good thing, I think the cost center approach is going to make it much easier to understand. Uh, one example would be technology. We've got that all together under um, one cost center when under the DESI account structure, it was in like six different buckets, um, which made it tough to really get a handle on. And you'll see that in a very broad sense, we broke down the budget into two sections, salaries and then operations and maintenance. So basically salaries and everything else. Tonight, we are going to touch on conditions and assumptions, talk about where we stand right now, what we think the future might look like, the return on investment that we believe that the schools provide, what we did to move on from our initial request, um, where initial request basically meets the reality financially. And then lastly, entitlement grants. And 
uh, as always, if you've been to one of our presentations, feel free to interrupt us absolutely anytime you like. So a quick review of where our funding comes from. Um, about 68%, 69% is local contribution. So what's required and then Grafton historically has gone 12 to 13% over that required local contribution. Um, so that, that's the biggest piece of the pie. The next biggest is chapter 70. It makes up about 30% of our budget. And then lastly, revolving accounts. Typically that's about 2% of our budget. This year, that's gonna be more like three to 4%. Um, and you'll see why in a second. I think you're well aware about how we create our budget. We're working on it about 11 months out of the year. We're talking about it regularly um, at almost every school committee meeting throughout the fall into the winter and then obviously into the spring. Um, kind of take a, a break from the development of the budget in July, uh, beginning of August, and then we start up the process again. Uh, so a lot of feedback goes into it. Your feedback's obviously critical in all of this. Uh, we work closely with the town, with Evan, with Mary, um, and I think we've got a very good process in place. You'll see in the next slide that the size of these different uh, circles doesn't really do the, the proportionality justice, but our three biggest drivers are salaries far and away. Over 80% of our budget is made up of salaries. We are at its core a, a people business. And then transportation and special education um, trailing pretty far behind. We've got technology and information, we've got facilities, all of the supplies and materials that go into that, um, and inflation is always there driving things forward. <clears throat> to give you a better visual of the proportionality that in the gray is obviously salaries, in the blue transportation, and in that reddish orange we've got special education. Everything else is important, but it's small in comparison. In terms of conditions and assumptions, no big surprises in terms of what we planned for FY25. We were aiming for a level service budget with COLA and step increases for um, our bargaining units. We're expecting and hoping that federal and state grants are funded at their current levels. Revolvers are funded, so our fees are basically funded at the same levels. The circuit breaker being funded at 75% and then chapter 70 remaining stable. So. You can see we basically have our fingers crossed that everything remains stable, uh, certainly not worse. Anything above that would be lovely. We're not counting on. So where we stand now and what the future looks like. This slide, get this out of the way. Um, this slide illustrates the past 13 years uh, in Grafton. You can see that the average is 5.46. Um, I'll speak to that in just a second. In the yellow, are the override years, just to give you some context of when, when we had the overrides. In the red was during the COVID years, if you will, uh, that was American Rescue Plan monies and ESSER money that we utilized. So I wanted to capture that. Um, I'm not trying to artificially inflate the average. I was just trying to call it like it was. So with the, the funds that are highlighted in red, uh, you take those out, it's 5.24% over the course since FY13 to give you just a ballpark sense. Can, can I interrupt of for a second? Course. So those those COVID years with the with the funding, yeah. were those used for regular operating expenses or special programs you needed because of COVID? Yeah, more, it depended on, um, that's a good question. Um, kind of a combination of the two. In the, the thick of it, obviously mm -hmm. we were investing in technology like we had never invested before. We, we were um, hiring additional staff. When we came back, we had additional nursing. Like it, So there were a bunch of COVID-specific pieces. Um, some of those pieces have continued on. Obviously, we didn't throw away or give away the tech. We still have that and have to support it. Um, we've maintained most of the nursing staff that we built up. So they weren't all necessarily just one-time expenses. Okay. Thank you. So that's, in the green obviously, is the preliminary FY25. Come on. Okay. Um, I'm 
assuming everybody's seen this before, this came um, from Evan and, the, and Mary, the work they did around the initial forecast for the town, um, which was <clears throat> fantastic for us. We were bugging them almost weekly to, for the forecast because it helps us to plan. Um, in here is built in a three, I believe a 3% increase for the schools going forward. We've talked about that um, and the need for us on the school end to work in tandem. Um, and we've contracted out with someone we work with to do um, a similar forecast, but just focus on the schools. So once we get all of that information, obviously we'll go through it, share it as needed, and Evan and Mary will build that into the town forecast. Um, so this is a, there's no years listed. So assume this is a forward looking? Uh, correct. Okay. Yep. So Into, oh, just to be clear, which, which year is it starting on? Is that F525? Um, did I cut it out or maybe we didn't have it? No. Oh, it sorry. was doing, yeah, I think it was part of the better this justice. So uh, uh, if I remember correctly, it's fiscal 24 is zero. Okay, that makes sense. Uh, and then 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. Thanks. So to put it in, it's just a visual. Obviously, it's not particularly pretty going forward. I'm sure that's not a huge surprise to you. Um, I think if once we average in whatever that number is, be it 4%, 4.5%, 5%, it's going to make this. 3% isn't realistic. I'm sorry? 3% isn't correct. realistic. Okay. Right. So we should probably put a realistic number in there to get the true. But that's what we're. That's what we're going to do. That's what you're going to do. Yeah, that's what we're already working on. It's I think, I probably think a couple I, mis I misunderstood, James. No, no, my we, we plugged 3.7 in. Oh, 3.7 for each year? Yep, as okay. a base number to build the forecast gotcha. with the understanding that He's gonna... the school department has to give us the actual forecast, okay. what they believe they'll need, and then we plug that in, sure. and we know exactly so what we need. Three point so that 2.9 yeah. is going to be 3.7, 4, maybe, once you plug in the right numbers? Yeah, it'll be yeah. worse. We'll know soon. It'll be, it'll be more red, Mark. It'll That's be more red. It'll, it'll go from pretty much what I said. It's, it's going to be more red. Two point nine anyway. to three point nine. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. yeah. I'm just saying it's going to be more red. <laughs> uh, in terms of in terms of return on investment, I know I always go to this. Um, I confidently argued that. Uh, if needed, that I believe Grafton provides the best return on investment for education in the state of Massachusetts. No question about that. Bar none to me. Um, out of roughly 326 districts, say 320, we are, as of 23, which is the latest information, um, we are 13th from the bottom in the state. Yet we are very competitive with every district on here, but every district locally. In yellow, I put the state average in kind of interestingly this is the first year since I've been a superintendent that Westboro's dropped below the state average they're locally kind of the you know they're not Beverly Hills and I'm sure they need money but comparatively um, they were always just above the state average so um, the difference proportionally again with this chart probably do a disjustice to the amount of funding differences that we're talking about. When we compare ourselves just to that state average, which is again, just to show you in the yellow, you can be, oh, it's, you know, off by $4,000. But when that's per pupil, that's $12.6 million every single year. It's a tremendous amount of money just to get to state average. I'm not arguing that we get there, um, but I'm proactively... That would be uh, a lot of red, Jay, if we did that. Yeah, <laughs> no, that would be a ton of red. It would be pretty awesome, but More it would red. be a ton I'm of red. Point that out, yeah. um, but you, you all understand how Absolutely. budget season is and all the overspending and the whatever. Uh, just a bunch of nonsense. We are a minimum aid district. Um, that means we get our increase annually in instead of, you know, my pie in the sky and then some 12.6 million, it's going to be about $96,000 off of a $45 million budget. And that's, that's the state aid for, for, yep. for those that's that are watching. Because we're minimum aid, right. Um, so the way the budget, yeah, I think you know this, but the way the budget process works is, again, it's 10 or 11 months out of the year. We go forward with kind of the, what we want to have. I think we do a really nice job, and it took years to get there, of not doing, again, the pie in the sky. We want, you know, I, I could come up with, I could fill that $12 million tomorrow. We don't do that. And they came out with a 6.8% increase of what we'd like to have, and that's the principals, directors, um, 
brought that to school committee. That's a great discussion to have, but obviously our reality is that we're at that 3.7% increase and we need to make that work. To make that work, we reduced the ask, not existing positions, reduced that by 1.4 million um, to get to that balanced number. Uh, at the top of this, I know it's kind of small, but at the top you'd see um, two additions that were asked for with paraprofessionals, one position through attrition, and then um, like maintenance lines, decrease in buildings and grounds, like custodial supplies, central office supplies. That was a few hundred thousand. About 930,000 of that we are going to cover, if you will, through the use of revolvers. And I'll go into that in a second. So I think it was 930,000 revolvers. So a natural question would be, where will that leave us in terms of revolver accounts in FY25? And here are, there are a few that aren't listed. We have a few like gift accounts that might have $8,000 in them or something. Uh, but anything of significance is listed here. So we've been trying to have as much money as we can, like not spend purposely knowing FY25 was coming, the fifth year in the override. We've done this before. The fifth year is the toughest. Um, to have as much as we could in revolvers so that we could cover a gap that we knew we'd have for FY25. So we are set up to do that and we're planning to do it. That's going to leave us at the end of FY25, so the end of next year, about 763000 in terms of in the savings account, if you will. That includes um, circuit breaker money. Like you, it, just best practice is never to have a total of 760,000 in your savings, if you will. So we will be um, in dire shape, not going into next year, but at the end of next year. So Jay, by the use of those revolvers, that $900,000, that allows you to <clears throat> do level services and keep everything the way it is in fiscal 24 Correct. without so you're not going to no reduction of staff nothing Correct. everything will be the same moving and the student population is about the same yes I, I we actually just last week um contracted again with nesdec uh we have an ongoing contract but with all the you've driven around and seen the everything seems to be developing there's a lot yeah. um so it, Basically, we've got a long-term contract with them, but we can contract them to just come in over the next month and take a take a look at what we should expect for enrollment. All right. So, obviously, we're using one-time revenue sources to Correct. keep things going to get us through that fifth year of the override. Yep. But it definitely demonstrates something you've been telling us from the start: the, the definite need of a major override next year to continue, because if you don't get it, then you will see a significant reduction oh, in no the operation question. school. Oh yeah. This is easily the tightest we've ever been. So that nine hundred thousand dollars directly for teacher expenses, education, uh, student learning, and things like that—it's yep. not used for anything other than that. Than Correct. That. Okay. It's purely operating. That—that's what I'm asking. So, yeah, that, yeah. so that that shows the importance of using that money to keep things the way it is right now. So Correct. keep continue to provide a quality education, and it proves next year we're not going to have the one-time oh, revenue sources because yeah. you know you never use one-time revenue sources to fund operating expenses. Obviously, there's a need this year because we wanted to right. stretch the override to five years. So it just proves that we really got to stop planning big time for fiscal 26. Okay. And well, it doesn't make our situation any better. I'm sure you've seen. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you just look in the paper just today. It was, oh, the Boston uh, Globe article was. Uh, uh, yeah, a whole timing bunch. was perfect like, on that it's article. It's unbelievable how similar yeah. uh, the, the situations are across the state. You said there, there was one reduction just due to a retirement, correct? Correct. We won't fill that, that position. That's a teaching position it's not going to be? Um, um, no, it's a, a, basically a support position that we won't fill. Well, that's why I asked. So but we probably people... even, I mean, <coughs> if, if we had the 12 million, great, that we'd keep the position. But it's a good it's a good move. We might even in good times have made that move. Gotcha. Um, this <coughs> it simply illustrates that in the past you'd want to have – an. You've got to remember, this isn't just like parking fees and kind of the smaller revolvers. We bring in every year about $1.8 million for Circuit Breaker. It helps us cover the really high costs of out-of-district tuitions. Um, and you, best practice, you want to have a year's worth. You want to have about $2 million total with Circuit Breaker as kind of a backstop. Students move into the district. Anything can happen. Um, but obviously, that cushion is 
is gone at the end of FY25. So let me ask you this. So if you're successful, if the town is successful, not you, the town is successful with an override next year, how long would it take you to rebuild those revolving counts back up to a reasonable level? Because obviously that has to be a goal, right? Yeah. Um, that would go into the design or, or the design of the override. Okay. However many years. Yep. And with that in mind, that, okay. that, that cushion. Uh, and that's, that that would be definitely something that you, you would strive for. With a, If we're coming up with a number for the override, you'd want to factor in building those revolving funds back up to the right amount. Yeah. You'd okay. at the very least want that 763 to be a full mm -hmm. year's worth of circuit breaker. Okay. Like that's just typical best practice. Okay. Um, uh, do you have here a reduction about 1.3 million? You said you were using about 900,000. Are you es estimating less income to those than past years to get from the 900,000 to the oh, 1.3? Yeah, that's in basically that 900,000. If you let's see if I can get this out, is if, think of it as like our savings account. Mm -hmm. That was what we had built up for re reserves. Okay, but we already have earmarked the money. We know the money coming in and we expect it to be very stable. Mm -hmm. That's already encumbered and planned for. So in total, we'll be spending more than 900 Okay, that's, that's a good question. That nine, okay, yeah, that's that a great sense. question. Yeah. Sorry, I wasn't clear about it. That 900000 we're going into a different account and spending it. Okay. Um, just because we have to. Um, entitlement grants, this isn't the most exciting part ever, and I'm almost done. We bring in about $953,000. Uh, thousand dollars this was for fy24 it ranges between eight hundred thousand and a million that we bring in uh, most of that is brought in through the idea special education grant almost that entire grant goes towards salaries and that's not these are entitlement grants so we do have to go through this very laborious pro process of applying but you get it automatically this isn't you have to just write a beautiful grant in your site that you got it. You you got it. Um, so we count on that money. We hope it goes up. I mean, if it swings a hundred thousand, one way or the other, it can make us either very happy or very sad. Uh, but we know it's going to be about nine fifty. And that just illust this simply illustrates that the eighty three percent of what we bring in for entitlement grants is for special education. Um, what's next? We're obviously waiting on revenue figures from the state to be finalized. Uh, I talked about the school department forecasting that we'll work with Evan and Mary to build into the town forecast. And we're always looking at ways that we can be creative to, to just squeeze more out of the funds that we have. And that I think is all, uh, yeah, that was just if you wanted it. Um, I think that's all I have on the, the budget piece. And then I do have a few slides on capital if, if I'm supposed to share those. To, is whatever you want. Do you have any any questions with what's been presented so far? Well, I want to talk. So, Evan, in terms of planning, forecasting, when when do you think you're going to be ready to present a forecast for 26? Um, within a couple of weeks of getting whatever the school department's percentages come in at, so we already have the. You already know the town. We already have the tool built yeah, i stole that tool. i know it's a great that, tool. that's why i brought it up <laughs> it's a great tool um and then we'll plug those in and that should give us the roadmap. we'll have to tweak some things on our side but it's pretty much ready that's great uh, we, you know we've spent a lot of time on it so it's yeah. pretty much ready so jay you're talking if if you add that one point or that 1.4 million or nine hundred thousand dollars back into on top of your 3.7 what's the total increase in spending so 3.7 is coming from the town. You're using the $900,000 of revolving. So that puts you... That's another percent. Another percent. All right. So percent is roughly... Four point. All right. So, so, for you, so when you do your forecast, you're looking at, a, at probably 5% mm. across the board for the schools. Be interested to see what that does to the number. It makes it more red, Mark. I, I understand the red. I understand the red. <laughs> but, you know, the, in, in, in no. 2014, right, mm -hmm. right, we asked for... Correct me if I'm wrong, about what, $3 million total override to fund the schools? Yeah. And then we did 2.3 or 3.2, 3.2. Because of inflationary pressures, because of the loss of the, the COVID, because of the increases that you're seeing, there's no way a $3.2 million override for five years is even going to come close. You're probably going to have to double that. Just based on looking at the base numbers that you showed there, 
with a 5% increase. Yep. You're probably looking at close to $6 million to get us through the next. Yeah, I mean, we factor in. I don't in... want to scare anybody, but it's, it's a reality. Right. Uh, you know, we got to factor in new growth yep. and what we're projecting for some of these projects that come online. Um, but it's, yeah, it's probably five at, you know, to be, to just pick a number. But, yep. I mean, we'll, we'll, obviously, we've got a lot more planning to do yep. to drive that. Well, that override didn't last the way that we thought it was going to. If you're having to go into revolving funds, and then also we got what was it like 1.6 million two years ago extra in state. Oh, the Chapter 70 gift that you got. That's right. That's right. So if it hadn't been for those two things, we would have been. We never would have made in, it five years. We wouldn't have made it five years. That's a good point. Yeah, I think I think that part of the problem with forecasting in general in the last three years yeah. is that you could not have predicted right. <laughs> supply yeah, chain, huge. inflation, yeah. salaries. I mean, everything has, has skewed more than, yeah. you know, when we plug in, we were plugging in 3.7 as a base number just to have something to make the, the spreadsheet work, right? Um, all the other numbers in the spreadsheet have not come out the way we thought they would because of all of these different pressures that I don't think any of us really foresaw it coming together in the way that they have. Well, following up on what Angelina just said, that the, the 3.2 wouldn't get you out to five years, and I know our tradition in Grafton for the last two had been five years. <clears throat> Do we want to think about shrinking that down and really drilling down? I, I just went through this, right? And we, we focused on three years. Because three years is a lot easier to, to, um, to manage and to budget for and to, and to speculate and forecast. Teacher contracts police contracts, all that three years, you can really you really have a better handle on what the numbers are. And I think it's a more realistic ask so that when you get to the year five that mm. you're at right now, you're not, you know, stripping down your revolving funds and everything else. So maybe strategically, maybe we should talk to the select board and think about a three-year look this time instead of a five-year look. And I think it would be easier for you to forecast. I think it would be a lot easier for you to forecast oh, sure. too because five years is tough. You know, and, mm. and I think three years is a more realistic viewpoint, and I think it's easier to, to talk to the residents and the taxpayers about, listen, here's our assumptions. Three years is a pretty legitimate look at it so that you're not scrambling in years four and five. And then maybe it's stretched to four years. Yeah. Hmm. Just, just based on My that, first yeah. reaction was, because eh. yeah. they, well, because people get, they don't want an override, you know, so like to talk about it every three years, it's like, that just feels but, like, I, but, yeah, but I understand, understand what you're saying. No, that does realistic. make sense. But it would be a smaller amount if it was only for three Correct. years as well. Correct. So it might be more might be that palatable. Number. Right. Right. Yeah. My takeaway from this is Angelina wants more over it. <laughs> <laughs> you're very astute. I know, right? Well, I mean, that's the other side of this. Like, our, our tax bills are pretty high. So... But I and I understand the school needs the money. It's just balancing the two things, and and there doesn't seem to be any change to that coming, any meaningful. Not from the know, state, right? Not from the state, exactly. So yeah. it's just kind of what where we're at, but I don't know. Hey, did you add uh, something else you want to talk about? Uh, cap or, I have or, slides on capital. <clears throat> if that's, I don't know if you guys want me. I, I, I just want to mention one thing. We're at the last year of our transportation contract. Oh, she's going to be going out to bid for So the we're going to be going into fiscal year 26 with much higher rates. Um, I did, that's in the budget book. Uh, so I just wanted to bring that to everyone. Have situation. they given you an idea on what kind of increase you're They're looking at? They're looking at 7%. And how big is the transportation? It's the <laughs> second budget. largest thing that you got. Yeah. So. Wow. 7%? Well, gas is $1,000 a gallon. So. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Wow. Real bummer, Kathleen. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to put it out there. No, it's, a, it's something you need to think about and, and worry about. No, oh, 100%, yeah. Are you guys uh, looking at electric buses or anything oh. like that? Okay, so I didn't mean to bring it up. I disagree with electric buses, but I know everybody's making a big push there, for it. I, so. I know, I have seen some cases. Not good? I, I don't want to be the guinea pig. Okay. Do you? 
follow your lead. <laughs> can we edit? Can we edit that comment out of the replay? <laughs> See, Jay, Jay's on track too because he's like Kathleen's against environmentalism. <laughs> he's like, I'll follow your lead. That's the really guy on that hill. I think, we'd be I think you went over the capital, your, right? You do want capital. Yeah. Let's see. It just had a few slides. Yeah. Um, you know, we have six schools. We have the three Worcester Street, the maintenance building um, up near the common. Um, over 600,000 square feet, a range in ages from 58 to the, the new high school, which is now uh, 12 years old. Yeah. 12. <laughs> like, it's, it's crazy. Um, I broke it up into, we broke it up into three different buckets this year. We're expecting um, to have about $800,000 in funding, which is fantastic. Um, we've got, I won't read them all, but a, a whole bunch of, kind of smaller projects, medium-sized projects that have been long overdue uh, that we're going to be able to uh, cross off the list with a, a busy summer, but I think it's going to be uh, fantastic. All of this stuff is very much overdue. I put in yellow the bathroom at GMS at voting. You may have noticed that um, we redid the um, women's bathroom and the girls' bathroom near the middle school. We'll do have enough money this year to do the uh, boys' bathroom on the other side, both original. And if you'd been in there in past years, they looked every bit original to the building um, they're in yellow because they're tied to larger projects we just with we just don't have a great mechanism in place to be able to get to the big you know big projects that cost three hundred thousand plus without doing like none of these things i could do a big pro i could replace a turf field for eight hundred thousand but none of these things are getting done and that that's just not going to work um, so this was F fy 25 26 through 29, you'll see it's in the back of the budget book. We had uh, a host of other projects uh, from ceiling repair, building envelope, some tile replacement, carpet replacement. And in yellow, again, part of a bigger project, ADA compliance. We had an audit done a couple of years back now, and it was, you know, a million dollars plus. We, we don't have a million dollar available just to knock it all out in a few months so we're just going to keep chipping away with on it same with the repointing at north street elementary it's hundreds of thousands to repoint the entire building so we're at least going to start addressing uh the most the worst of the issues that we have there and then lastly um always a just a reality is those large-scale <coughs> projects um, next year we're going to have to take a real hard look at replacing the turf field one that was the first field um, put in at the high school project it's the one within the track you know the, the football field the turf field two was put in only a year later but the the technology was advancing so rapidly that it's markedly better off just because of the technology um but those field it's already exceeded its 10-year lifespan and when they fail you may if you've got maybe kids or you know you, you go to games you've been on the fields that have failed and it's like walking on the carpet here it's green but it's that's it it's uh, just dangerous it's going to fail um, so we're working on getting some estimates having a, a real explanation of, of what needs to be done and what the options are there um, in green I put the pieces that I think there's potential for partnership with um, groups uh, such as the CPC and or um, town athletic groups for a field house at GHS, uh, increased playground accessibility at North Grafton Elementary School. CPC was instrumental in um, getting us a new playground at mm -hmm. South Grafton Elementary, opened this fall. It's awesome, totally accessible. It's great uh, for the school, but for the community. Uh, bleachers at GMS are original. Um, the insurance company always wants us to replace those bleachers, but they're hundreds of thousands of dollars, so they just kind of just linger there. I already mentioned the repointing and the ADA compliance. Um, the exterior at GMS, that blue is, unless you're a big fan of blue, it's always not the greatest sight ever seeing the outside of the building, but if you get close, you can see it's rusted out, the paint's peeling. We're going to have to address that at some point. 
going back to the turf field, if we yeah. didn't have a turf field and we wanted to build a turf field, that would be eligible for CPA, right? Think so. I don't no, think so. No, not, not in any any way. Okay. I don't think so. I think there was another town that tried to do that. And it didn't work. It got denied. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was trying to remember. I yeah. I, I know they, they have yes. yeah. policy against turf field. I didn't know if it was just replacement or actual initial installation hmm. as well. But I know they they know turf field. Um, could you tell us a little bit about the field house? I know I've I've seen that on budget. For a few years, but yeah, really most sure of these things have been on since I've been here. Um, I, I, and it kind of preceded me. I'm not sure why there isn't a, a field house of any kind. Um, so, say on any like a football game is pretty easy. We're always going to have custodians there. They're going to be able to open the building if it's a big crowd. We can open the building, and people could go into the commons and utilize those pretty large bathrooms um, with obviously our staff there. Um, when it's on the weekends, when it's not this big school thing, it could be a big tournament for, say, Pop Warner or something. All we have is two bathrooms, two small bathrooms. You may have been in there, um, kind of under the library, and there's a door to get in. And just to open it and to be functional, we've got to, we have to rent out the space and have coverage, if you will. Um, we don't have porta potties we don't have any accessibility other than those those two small restrooms um so that that's been an issue for us that paired with depending on cost and depending on scope and location and the ability to tie into sewer and electrical uh, a lot of districts i think shrewsbury actually built theirs post uh, new school they built one and it has uh, restroom facilities but also has an area for concessions. Um, kind of just makes sense. We we don't have that. We have a little rinky dink cart, and it's lovely, but that's a stretch. Um, so that's that's the field house. So we're we're working on getting some some quotes on on that. I want to have a better understanding of what that would actually cost us, um, and look at partnering with uh, large groups in town that utilize those fields. I mean, you come on a Saturday or Sunday, odds are it's lacrosse, soccer, it's Pop Warner. It's, and that's just what we want. Um, but the turf's got to be safe, and ideally we'd have um, a field house that could be accessed and restrooms utilized. Yeah, Heather? Would the boosters pay for some of that? Um, that would be the hope. Um, okay. I mean, the amount of money is, is going to be pretty significant, but if we could offset potentially, and I haven't had these conversations with those groups that I've mentioned, if we could offset the rental, because we would still, for the larger activities, need a custodian or custodians. We'd need a presence there. Um, but oftentimes they are 99% on the fields. Um, we might need an opening and a closing and a cleanup at the end, but it would be a far cry from needing somebody occupying the school for use of that tiny percentage of the building um, weekend after weekend. So yeah, it, I was just I was just thinking it, maybe it, the, the the boosters would. Yeah, um, I, I think they probably you know. would. It would be a, hopefully a win win. Um, we haven't I haven't explored this, but having those discussions and then looking at potentially um, businesses in the area to help sponsor and support. Um, we're on the brink of getting new scoreboards uh, paid paid for. I, and we're very close to the, this coming to fruition, paid entirely um, by a local business and sponsored. Great. Greg, I have one hand on Zoom. Yeah. Um, do we have any other questions from the Finance Committee? Uh, we do have someone requesting as on Zoom. I'm not sure that that's their actual name. Uh, if they could update that. Uh, could bring them in to ask their question. Okay, go ahead. 
Oh, hey, sorry, it's Ed Prisby. Uh, oh, thank you. <laughs> I, was just, I was just being playful with my name. Um, so, Jay, just a quick question about the turf fields. If the capital costs uh, in the maintenance costs of these are, are so severe, and obviously we've all read about sort of the environmental hazard and some safety concern with these turf fields, is there any thought given to going just back to natural grass and, and what that would cost and what the maintenance of that would look like? That will be something that I, I, in whatever I put together, Ed, uh, that will be laid out. Um, in my experience, and I want to be fair about this, this is just word of mouth talking to other superintendents and athletic directors. Uh, it's super labor intensive and a lot harder than it sounds. Sure. Um, it's one thing, obviously, at Gillette, um, and I know that's not what you're saying, but I want to get a real... Um, real good handle on what the cost, what it takes to really keep up with that and then speak with and get qualitative feedback from the districts that have, have done that. Sure. Okay, thanks. Thank you. So uh, I assume we're, we're still among the uh, minimum aid district. We don't see any much chance in that changing with mm -mm. the info from out last year. I think last year what they we after we talked to our representatives they they managed to increase the minimum for the year to sixty. Yeah. But yeah. I can see if thirty only gets us a hundred thousand, sixty would just get us another hundred thousand, so not a whole lot. Right. And plus didn't they didn't they say they're not gonna make any meaningful changes to that until after the mm -hmm. seven year period of the Student yeah, Opportunity Act. That's what they're so you're not going to see anything for a couple of years anyway, even if even if that happens, right? Yeah. So I don't see that happening, helping the three to five year projection that we're talking about. Yep. Okay. Does anyone else have any other question? Great job. Is there any, anything else thank you, you wanted to? Uh, no, just, uh, thank you for having us. If you do have any follow up questions or want us back, we're more than happy to do that. Okay. All right. Uh, thank anyone you. in the audience have anything? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, so next up on our agenda, choose finance committee member to prepare the state of the town message. I move that Greg Ma prepare the state uh, of the town message. Second. No move. <laughs> that, that didn't take long. No. <laughs> you do a wonderful You're job. You're so good at it. So is anyone, any, was anyone else interested in doing it? Next year, I'm just going to put choose Greg Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That'll save you time on the minutes. Yeah. Yes. Question. Can I object? <laughs> no. Well, from Apollo 13, the other wives haven't done three. <laughs> this would be his third time. Your objection is noted. <laughs> put, put that in the minutes. Yep. Yeah. Skip. 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 Don't care. <laughs> Okay, any further discussion on the motion? All right, let's go to a vote. Skip? Aye. Heather? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Mark? Yes. <laughs> Aye. 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 Uh, I vote nay, just, just because. All right. Well, you want to keep Amy happy, so that's a good, that's a good vote. All right. Last item on our agenda tonight is meeting minutes. We have minutes for the January 31st meeting. I entertain a motion to accept the. So moved. Thank you. Yeah. Are they good? Just... Yeah. All right. Any discussion? Is the fund transfer request for the repairs of the generator not? Oh, I was. That's right. It was on one version, but you, apparently not do you need my it? agenda version. Yeah, you can. You we'll, can... we'll do that after the right. minutes. <laughs> I must have been looking at an older version of the agenda. Then no other discussion for me. Okay, so motion made and seconded. Any dis discussion? Skip? Abstain. Heather? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Mark? Aye. Angelina? Abstain. Nick? Aye. Tori? Aye. And Greg votes aye. Claire carried. All right. Uh, do we have someone to present on the 
finance uh, the reserve fund transfer request? Uh, I can in a, a generalized term. So okay. this is for the um, PD generator. Um, we had an annual generator service. It, 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 they call it a load test. They come put a load bank on it, run it at its maximum capacity, and found that it uh, failed? had some. It didn't fail, but it had radiator issues. It had a whole bunch of things that cropped up. So we had to make those repairs so that it's serviceable. I move we grant the request. Second. Okay, so what was the amount? The $5,116. Do we have the current reserve fund balance? Mary, do you have the current balance in front of you? It would be seventy-five grand. No, we proved a reserve fund transfer at our last meeting, Skip. Uh oh <laughs> I don't remember how much it was for. It was for the sign, so it was about five thousand dollars. Right. So it was probably still about what sixty nine, seventy thousand dollars. Yeah, right around there. Four thousand. It was five thousand. It was five thousand dollars. You're right, Greg, for the okay. sign. So, so you have roughly seventy thousand dollar balance. A little, little, little more. Well, actually, we approved two reserve fund transfers at the man. last meeting, <laughs> totaling nine thousand seven hundred and sixty two dollars. No, so that, that first five thousand is for the grant. That wasn't right. a reserve fund? Oh, that was a grant, and then we did 4000 I'm sorry. Yeah. It'd be nice if I read the minutes. Anyway, so thank you for pointing <laughs> yeah. out that I did. Yes, your, your balance is $70,238. Okay. We did one transfer for the Millbury Street welcome sign, and that was $4,762. Okay, so the quote is for replacing the radiator, drain coolant, move housing, replace radiator, assemble fill new coolant and test. Any further discussion on the motion to approve the rever rever reserve fund transfer request the amount of $5,116? All right, go to a vote. Skip? Aye. Heather? Aye. Kyle? Aye. Dan? Aye. Mark? Aye. Angelina? Aye. Nick? Aye. Victoria? Aye. And Greg votes aye. Declare the motion carried unanimously. Do we have anything further to come before the meeting today, before our meeting on Saturday? If not, we will see you all on Saturday. I declare the meeting adjourned.